Hello YouTube, this is Goddard Radio Moscow here again with another beer review. Now for this one I want to revisit one of my favourite Scottish craft breweries from a very beautiful part of the country incidentally. Uh, tonight I have for you the Orkney Brewery's Dark Island Dark Ale. Now I've already done a review of the Northern Light from this brewery which is a pale ale. Uh, I'll put the link for that in the video description so you can check that out if you're interested. Now I'll just take you through a history of the, the Orkney Brewery itself and for the benefit of those of you watching outside of Scotland I'll tell you a little bit about Orkney and what it's famous for. But if you're if you're simply interested in the tasting of this beer then just feel free, fast forward towards the last few minutes of the video where you'll catch that segment of it. But anyway, I always describe Scotland as looking a bit like a monster's head which I've done in various videos before. And when you're talking about the islands of Scotland, you always have in the west of the country you have the Hebridean Islands and then just to the north of that the longer chain of islands are the Western Isles. The ones just where the monster starts to get a bit of a mohawk thing going on just north of that is the Orkney Islands where this beer's from and then beyond that in the north you have the Shetland Islands and then if you go beyond that you have the Faroe Islands which are an autonomous province of Denmark and then you're going up to Iceland and Greenland and stuff like that. But anyway, uh, the Orkney Islands are actually very famous for having some of the best preserved uh, archaeological sites sorry, in Europe and some of these date back to around 5,500 years ago, older than Stonehenge incidentally but they have UNESCO World Heritage status these days. A lot of people just come to Scotland and simply go to Edinburgh and Stirling but I would always say to you the west and the northern parts of the country are probably the most beautiful so definitely explore a little bit if you're visiting from outside of Scotland. Now if you're visiting Orkney you should definitely go to the Scarabray prehistoric village and this was actually only re-revealed in 1850 due to a very violent storm which ripped up part of the ground and in, uh, so it's quite cool actually to think that uh, we wouldn't even know that that was there if this violent storm had happened, that would just be still sitting there. But both Orkney and Shetland actually have a very significant Norse Viking heritage, far more prominent than it is with the Scottish mainland, but this can be seen in a lot of the place names. For example, on Orkney you have the uh, the St Magnus Cathedral in Kirkwall, and actually uh, it's quite interesting because the Orkney and Shetland Islands only became Scottish in 1468, so they're a relatively new part of the country actually. But the brewery is currently owned by a guy called Norman Sinclair, and he's an award winning hotelier who owns various properties around the country. Now Norman was born in Orkney, you would call him an Arcadian, eh, but he moved to Fort William at a young age and actually worked in the family's aluminium business. Now in 2006 he set up his new company which was called Sinclair Breweries Limited which subsequently acquired two breweries, the Orkney Brewery, this one here, and the Atlas Brewery which is in a little town called Kinloch Laven which is down near Fort William. Uh, now the Orkney Brewery was founded back in March 1988 by Roger White at the old schoolhouse in Sandwick in Orkney and then the Atlas Brewery was founded in 2002 by Neil Cotton and this merged with the Orkney Brewery in 2004 under the name Highlands and Islands Breweries. Now this came about due to the retiral of Roger White from the Orkney Brewery and then the subsequent acquisition of shares by the Atlas Brewery. Then the Atlas Brewery's owner Neil Cotton, he served as the managing director of the Highlands and Islands Brewery for a short period of time and he drove a series of changes at the Orkney Brewery, but this company was then purchased by Sinclair Breweries Limited in 2006. Now the brewery is still based in the same old schoolhouse in Coilu, or Coilu, sorry, which is just a mile from the Neolithic site Scarabray that I was mentioning earlier on. But they actually have three employees there who open who are involved with the brewing of the beer. This is the head brewer Andrew Fulton, whose signature is on the bottom of the label on the beer, and he's a graduate of the famous brewing program at Heriot Watt University, the same one that the uh, the brewer from the Einstuck Brewery in Iceland uh, graduated from. Uh, Kevin Starling, who is a South Londoner who was involved with transport businesses before starting up brewing in 2005 and they also have Magnus Flett, who's a former farmer from Harry on the island, so he's an Orcadian as well and he joined the brewery in 2001. Now that's a basic history of the brewery, uh, but the brewery actually inc incidentally, they also produce, they produce cask ale and filtered beers in bottles and they're available throughout Europe and North America, so I didn't realise uh, quite how well distributed these beers were. But in addition to the Dark Island Dark Ale, they also have the Northern Light, which is the pale ale I mentioned, that I've put the link for in the description. They have Red McGregor, which is a red ale, Raven Ale, which is a bitter ale, Dragon Head, which is a stout, and Skull Splitter, which I believe is their most famous beer, and this is a strong ale. And there's an interesting history behind that particular one, but I'll divulge that in the, the later video when I review that beer itself. But each of the, the beers are available in bottles, but they're also available as cask ales, and they also have a seasonal beer on draft called the Clue 
Tutti Dumpling. But the beers have actually won a number of awards, and particularly the Dark Island and Skull Splitter brews are the ones that have brought in the awards. And I'll ch I'll put the link to the brewery website in the description, and this will tell you a little bit more about that. But I'll just uh, let you have a little look at the bottle artwork and stuff like that just now. You can just have a little look here. As I mentioned, this is a 4.6% dark ale. It's actually a surprisingly low ABV. You can see Andrew Fulton's signature on the bottom of the label there. You have some of the standing stones there on the, the, on the bottle artwork. It's a standard Orkney Brewery bottle cap, which I didn't realise when I did the last review. That's actually bird's heads that are on that one, which is quite cool. These are always really nice looking bottles, quite classy, typical kind of... Uh, craft beer. It always it looks really nice and it suits the dark beer really well. But as I said, this one is a dark ale. I think that might have had a bit of condensation on it when you were looking at it before. But anyway, let's get on with the tasting of this beer. I'm quite excited to do this one now that I'm doing a review for it. I've had it before, but um, we'll just get this guy out and get him tasted. Now, as I said, this is a 4.6% dark ale. Uh, it uses apparently, it was aged in Highland whiskey casts apparently, but it uses first gold and Golding's hops and also crystal and chocolate malt. So this will be an interesting one. I've had this before and I remember it being a really, really beautiful beer. Let's just swirl this about a little bit, try and get a wee bit of head on it for the last little pour. There we are. Should be nice. Okay. So let's get on with the tasting of this. As you can see, there's not much visible carbonation in this. If I hold it up to the light, there's just a little bit of a ruby tint to it. But other than that, it's a very, very dark brown colour. There's a nice bit of frothy head on it. It's actually got quite a big nose on this one. I'm getting that before I've even really looked at it. The head, as I say, is more frothy than bubbly. There wasn't so much carbonation visible in that. In terms of the aroma, it's big on the coffee and chocolate malts, as you would expect. There's some notes of sort of... a uh, a brown sugar kind of toffee-ish element in there. There's the dark fruits as well, maybe, I would say. Maybe a little bit of a, some nutty character to it. It's a really, really nice smell to this one. It's not it's not too overpowering, but if you stick your nose down and have a little smell about it, it's quite... It does have a really, really nice smell, mainly the chocolate malts with that little bit of brown sugar character and some dark fruits. But let's give this guy a taste. Now it's quite like the nose actually, the thing you mainly notice is the coffee and chocolate malts in there. There's quite a bit of a roasted character to this one as well. The dark fruits are kind of coming in a bit later on. Yeah, the dark fruits are kind of staying towards the aftertaste, I would say. There's actually maybe a hint of vanilla, I would want to say, in there. And that's probably likely to come from the, the cask aging that this beer goes through. But this is, um, I would say there's an element of breadiness in there as well. What's quite surprising with this one is the fact that it's only a 4.6% ABV, but it holds quite a complex flavour to it. And that's unusual in that sense. But yeah, the main flavours in this one are the chocolate and coffee malts. And there is that element of roasted character. And then the dark fruits come in afterwards. And they're sort of staying towards the aftertaste. The aftertaste does have that coffee and chocolate element too. But you're having some of the dark fruits just in on top of that. And the beer does have a good bit of roasty character in it, I would say. Not so much picking up the nutty element that I thought before. And the caramel in it I would say isn't so prominent as I would have thought it would have been I have to say. In terms of the mouth this one's a very very clean and smooth beer. It's surprisingly light for the style I would say. It's actually quite a a sort of wet feel to it. It's not very heavy. You could sit and drink quite a few of these in a session quite easily. But as I say the kind of surprising thing with this beer is the fact that it's it holds a hell of a complex flavour for being such a low ABV. And as I say, like this is a very, very good overall, I would say, this is a, a Scottish craft brewery that if you haven't checked them out before, definitely give them a go. They're worth. They're definitely worth checking out. I have to admit, I prefer the sort of, uh, I prefer the Northern Light to this one, but the, the, as I say, beer is subjective. You might like a certain style of beer more than me and vice versa and stuff like that. So it's all about your own taste. This is a very, very good beer and I would say definitely give it a try if you can get it at all. And as I say, it's very, very well distributed throughout the world these days. A lot more than I thought, incidentally. 
But I hope this particular beer review has been informative for you. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. I hope they they are informative and not just me rambling, of course. But please uh, let me know the, in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer, and also suggest other beers for me to review as well. I'm always open to that particular suggestion. But please like, subscribe, share all the usual YouTube jazz. Thanks again for watching. You've been watching God of Radio Moscow, and I shall catch you soon. Cheers.